friends, welcome back to our channel. I have a really exciting video to share with you today. This is what sparked our entire garage makeover. This is our next phase. This is our new baby. This is our new 51100 Thunder Laser Machine. I honestly cannot stop smiling ear to ear every single time I see it. We have only had it set up for a few weeks now, but I don't think that I can properly express how grateful I am that Joe and I are even in this position to start a new adventure. The past few years of life have brought on so much anxiety, so much chaos, so much turmoil. It is so refreshing to be excited about something, to be hopeful, and to have a project that can completely consume us and drown out all of the outside noise. I cannot wait to get back to doing things that make me happy and to creating. So let's get this new Thunder 51100 laser machine completely set up. We were not at all expecting our machine to arrive as quickly as it did. We were originally quoted an April arrival and ended up getting it well over a month early. We were mid-garage makeover and nowhere near ready for it to arrive. I had so much anxiety watching it get taken off the FedEx truck. I kept thinking, it's going to fall, it's going to fall, he's going to drop it, it's going to drop it. Fortunately, it came off the truck without a single hitch. As you can see, our driveway is on a very large slant. We knew this would make everything that much more difficult, but it is what it is, and we had to find a way to get this beast into the garage. Once the FedEx guy left, we were on our own. One of the main things that we had to have done before we set up the Thunder Laser machine in the garage was we had to have some electrical work done. This runs on a 20 amp dedicated breaker and we had to have somebody come in and do that for us. Normally Joe and I would try to DIY it ourselves, but anything having to do with electrical, I'm a little bit sketched out and I wanted to make sure that it was done properly. So we ended up hiring an electrician to come out and take care of this for us. After making a bunch of holes in the wall, running wires, and installing the new boxes, everything was ready to go within a couple of hours. This electrician only charged us about $150, and that was including all of the parts. Based on what we have seen in the Thunder Laser groups online, this seems to be a really great price. We did have to do the drywall repair ourselves, but that's something that we do quite often in the house, so it was not a big deal. Once we completed the garage makeover and all of the electrical work was done, it was time to get this beast into the garage. I mean, Joe's a really strong guy, but I'm pretty useless these days, and this machine weighs over 900 pounds. I don't know if these clips do any justice to the machine, but have I mentioned how big this is? The crate itself measured over 7 feet wide and over 5 feet deep. To help with the grade on the driveway, we actually backed my Jeep right up to the back of the crate. If things went south, literally, it would at least get stopped from going down the driveway and into the street. With that set up, it was time to uncrate. First thing we did was remove all of the hinges. Then we used a crowbar to take off the top and sides of the crate. I removed the foam pieces and padding from all around the machine. Then Joe took the compressor out, the exhaust, the toolbox, and the chiller. Once the plastic came off, it was time to take care of the wheels and the feet on the machine. They arrived with wood pieces securing them, so Joe used a crowbar to just pry each piece of wood off. Once the wheels and feet were free, it was time to raise the feet up so that we could wheel the machine off of the crate. We also had to make sure they were high enough to clear the platform. Obviously, there was no way that we were even attempting to carry this machine off of the crate. So the next step was to build a little makeshift ramp so that we can wheel it right into the space. 
Using most of the wood that was built right into the crate, plus a few extras, Joe added some of the scraps to run the ramps down. Then he secured some of the larger pieces of plywood on each side. As scared as I was for this thing to come off, it went by so fast, I didn't even have time to set the camera up to film it. It came right off with no problems. Literally everything that you need to get your thunder set up and get your first project going comes right in the crate. One of the things that gets sent out with your thunder laser is this great little toolbox. This is such a neat little kit and it's nice to have all of the tools you need all in one place. It has a couple of screwdrivers for you, some zip ties or cable ties, which help keep the cords and things together, a spare belt in case the original one on the machine goes out, these are the keys to open up the lenses when they need to be cleaned or repaired. This focus ruler is one of my most used items from the toolbox. It allows you to manually focus all of your materials. The kit also comes with a little ruler, which always comes in handy, a small piece of acrylic to test power, a six millimeter air nozzle, and an XY limit switch, which helps the axis work within the specified range. Spare fuses, some strong magnets which help keep materials to lay flat, and all of the anchors and screws that you're gonna need to secure the exhaust. Then in the bottom of the toolbox are all of your wires, like your ethernet cable, chiller cables, tubing, USB to hook up your computer, your main power cable, and it has a few extras that come in super handy, like these Q-tips which you can use for cleaning your lenses, Allen drivers to tighten and loosen the belt and pulley, a clamp to be used with all of the Allen wrenches, a tiny little small cutter, lubricating oil for the pulleys and guide rails, and a great little lens cleaning solution. With everything unloaded, it was finally time to get this set up. Like I said, I was super intimidated and really anxious before the machine arrived. I was under the impression that it was gonna be super complicated, that we weren't gonna know what to do with what, and of course I wanted to make sure that it was done properly. Fortunately, this all went a thousand times easier than I could have ever imagined. Everything is so clearly spelled out and labeled for you. First, you need to grab your tubing and find the water in and water out stickers on the chiller and match those up on the same stickers on the back of the laser. Orange to orange and then green to green. Next, you have to grab your cable for the chiller. On one end, it has this little notch that you will match up to the notch on the machine. Once it's in place, just screw it in and secure it. Then grab the power cable for the chiller. It also has this little notch at one end that you match up to the socket on the machine. Once it's in place, it automatically snaps right into place. Plug the other end right into the chiller. The last step for the chiller is filling it with water. You're gonna need distilled water for this. We grabbed some from the market, but these are really available everywhere. Remove the little knob on top of the chiller, and then I used a funnel to get the water inside. There is a little gauge to make sure that you are filling to exactly where you need to. All right, with the chiller taken care of, it was now time to tackle the exhaust. This step isn't necessarily difficult, but it does require a few steps to get it set up properly. First thing we did was purchase a dryer hood for the exterior of the house. We grabbed this right from Lowe's, but I know Amazon carries them as well. First, we mark the hole we needed to create for the hood. Then we cut the hole out of the drywall. We actually ran into a bit of an issue with some of the pipes and had to recut the hole, which meant that we had some drywall repair as well. Again, not difficult, just a little speed bump. And now the difficult part, getting through the exterior stucco of the house. Unfortunately, we didn't have the most ideal tool for this part of the project, so we had to wing it. Using this giant masonry drill bit, Joe just made a bunch of holes in the circle we needed to cut out of the wall. Once the majority was taken out, Joe just cleaned up the area to make it more uniform. Then we were able to fit the exhaust tube right through. Once the tubing is through, you just slip the hood right into place and the exterior is ready to go. 
To secure the exhaust to the wall, you have to remove the center portion here. We located the studs in the wall to see if we would even need the anchors, but we weren't quite that lucky to hit them in the position we needed. We made sure it was level and then marked the holes, then drilled the pilot holes for the anchors. With the anchors in place, we just drilled the screws it came with and attached it to the wall. Once you replace the center portion of this exhaust using the clamps, it's time to attach it all to the machine itself. Thunder sends a very long portion of ducting with the machine. We had so much extra based on where and how we were setting this up. It actually ended up getting the way of properly securing. So Joe just cut out a little portion to prevent any extra bunching. You really do want this exhaust and tubing set up with minimal kinks, turns, or twists. The easier the air can get from the machine to the outdoors, the better. Once it's in place, you tie it down with the duct clamps, plug it in, and that's one more step completed. And to be honest with you, as soon as we had the setup, we were actually running the tubing right outside of the garage. The exhaust wasn't fully set up, but we also knew that we needed a permanent solution for it. The last thing you need to connect is the air compressor. Just two little pieces. The blue tubing goes from the machine to the laser, and then you plug the power cord into the back of the machine. And with that, the Thunder 51100 was completely set up and ready to go. The entire process took us a couple of hours, but that was mainly because of the problems that we ran into with the drywall and having to repair it. If we hadn't had that little hiccup, we would have had this entire process completed in about 30 minutes. And this is what our final setup looks like. Again, ideally you really want that tubing on the exhaust to be a direct shot to the outside, but it is what it is. The location of the machine, the unknowns behind the drywall, the hiccups that you run into, we did the best that we could. And ultimately, every time that we have run the laser, we haven't run into any problems with the exhaust or getting any of the fumes or smoke out. The last little step before turning the machine on, you have to get the feet back down and get the machine leveled. This is gonna be absolutely necessary to make sure that the laser runs all of your jobs properly. Just screw the feet back into place on each corner. You will probably need to go back and forth a little bit on each of the feet to get it all leveled completely everywhere, but it shouldn't take that long. Everything hooked up now, it was time to wheel it in place and fire it up. The last two connections that you need to make on the machine is the USB cable to hook it up to your computer and then the main power cord. Like a few of the other plugs with the Thunder Laser, this also has little grooves making it so easy to line up, plug in, and make sure that it is properly secured. Once that's on, you connect the computer and the laser itself is ready to go. I love hearing this little alert every time we turn on the machine. It never gets old. So that is everything that I have for you today. This video was really dedicated just to the setup of the Thunder 51100 laser machine. But we have a ton of other tutorials and videos to share with you, including the software that we use to run the laser, how to properly run a job, a ramp test, autofocus, and everything in between. We cannot wait to share everything that this beast can do. If you like this video and found it helpful, or if you are one step closer to buying a laser machine of yourself, make sure that you give this video a like, and also make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss another tutorial or video coming from our garage. Have a great week, friends. I will see you soon.